In this video, we're going to run through all the main methods of contraception, which is basically any artificial method that people use to prevent pregnancy. The aim is that you'll understand how they all work, and can also discuss the pros and cons of each. First though, I just wanted to very quickly recap how pregnancy starts, which isn't in your course, but I think it helps a lot to understand contraception. This here is a picture of the female reproductive system. As we saw in the last video, the hormone FSH stimulates an egg in one of the ovaries to develop, and then after about two weeks, the hormone LH triggers the release of that egg, which we call ovulation. It then passes along the adjacent fallopian tube, and at this point it could combine with a sperm cell to form a fertilized egg. If it did, then this fertilized egg would continue along the fallopian tube to the uterus, where it would implant into the wall and slowly develop into a fetus. For reference later on, this part here is the cervix, which is the entrance to the uterus. So as we go through this video and look at all the different methods of contraception, keep thinking back to this process and remember that contraception has to somehow interrupt this process in order to prevent pregnancy. One way to categorize all the different methods of contraception is to split them between those that use hormones and those that don't. The hormonal methods rely on releasing estrogen, progesterone, or some combination of the two. If estrogen is released steadily every day, then it inhibits the production of FSH. And as FSH normally stimulates egg development, it means that no egg will develop or be released. Meanwhile, progesterone stimulates the production of thick mucus in the cervix, which remember is the entrance to the uterus, and so prevents the sperm from ever reaching the egg. One of the most common contraceptives is the combined oral contraceptive pill, which contains a combination of both estrogen and progesterone, and is often just called the pill. It's over 99% effective at preventing pregnancy, as long as the pills are taken properly. But it can sometimes have side effects, such as headaches or nausea. There's also a progesterone-only pill, which is just as effective, but tends to have fewer side effects. As well as taking a pill, there's also a few other methods of slowly releasing hormones. The contraceptive patch is like a small sticker that you place on the upper arm, which slowly releases estrogen and progesterone, and each patch lasts one week. The contraceptive injection is an injection of progesterone into the upper arm, with each dose lasting two to three months. A longer option is the contraceptive implant, which involves a small device being placed under the skin of the arm, which will then slowly release progesterone for up to three years. Lastly, there's the intrauterine device, or IUD, which is placed inside the uterus. The plastic version releases progesterone, which remember will stimulate the production of a thick mucus in the cervix. There's also a copper version of the IUD but it doesn't involve any hormones. It just prevents sperm from surviving in the uterus by killing them. So even though we've included it on this page of hormonal contraceptives, do remember that the copper IUD, which is sometimes called the copper coil, isn't a hormonal contraceptive. And whether you look at a plastic or the copper IUD, both of these can last over three years. So as you can see, there are loads of different types of hormonal contraceptives, and they all work in a pretty similar way. The big difference is how invasive the initial treatment is, for example, taking a pill versus having something implanted into your body, and how long they last, which varies from days to years. Our second group of contraceptives was the non-hormonal methods. What these have in common is that they all work by somehow preventing the sperm from meeting the egg. 
For example, condoms are worn over the penis, which traps any sperm. There are also female condoms, which are worn inside the vagina, but do basically the same thing. One of the important things about condoms is that they're the only form of contraception that also protect against sexually transmitted diseases, or STDs. Next, there's the diaphragm, which is a shallow plastic cup that fits over the cervix to block sperm from entering the uterus. Unfortunately, it's not that reliable though, so it has to be used with spermicide, which is a substance that kills sperm. Spermicides can be used alone as a form of contraception, but they only work around 7 out of 10 times, so they're not really that good. Now, a more drastic method is a sterilization. In women, this involves cutting or tying the fallopian tubes, which remember connect the ovaries to the uterus. And so if they're cut, the eggs won't be able to pass from the ovaries into the uterus anymore. This is pretty much permanent though, so it's generally only chosen once a woman has had all the kids that she wants. Men can also undergo sterilization by having their sperm ducts cut and tied. Sometimes people use so-called natural methods, such as only having sex at certain times of the month, or stopping sex just before ejaculation. These are both very unreliable though, and not recommended. Of course, the only way to be 100% sure of avoiding pregnancy is by abstaining from sex altogether. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.